This video is going to be a quick introduction to tone mapping to explain what it is, what it does, and how it works within Blender. So in the viewport, I'm displaying a high dynamic range image from Polyhaven. And in my render settings, I've set my view transform to standard just for the purposes of this demonstration, because that disables the built-in tone mapping within Blender. So by default, most of the world uses standard dynamic range which can only handle a very limited amount of contrast, typically about eight stops, which is what this rectangle here represents over this gradient, which represents the full dynamic range, which is available typically about 20 or 30 stops. So when you have a scene with a lot of contrast, such as this one, you're faced with a problem. You can either expose for the midtones, as I'm doing here, or for the shadows or the highlights. And this is very similar to old school photographers shooting slide film, which was very limited in terms of the amount of contrast it could handle. And so what I can do when faced with a scene like this, let's say I want to expose for the highlights outside of the window, I would simply adjust the exposure until they look right. And I've moved this rectangle over the highlight region. Highlights are looking really nice, but of course, everything else falls outside of the range that we can expose for. And so it's all very dark, if not completely black. Alternatively, of course, I could adjust the exposure to expose for the shadows, and then we have the opposite problem. The shadows are nice and bright, but the midtones and the highlights are all completely blown out. And so this is the problem that tone mapping attempts to solve. If I go back to exposing for the midtones, I can apply some tone mapping, and what that's going to do is to take this highlight region here and compress it so that it fits within the available dynamic range, like this. So you can see now we have far more of our highlights within the rectangle. And if you look outside of the window, the results are much more pleasing. And because in 3D, we are almost always dealing with high dynamic range imagery, tone mapping is going to be a necessity. And Blender, of course, does it by default. So if I just return to the non-tone map version of this image and we go into the render settings, let's take a look at the view transform. By default, it's set to AGX. And just take a look out the window as I set it back to AGX you can see that our highlights are restored. And that's because this view transform is tone mapping the image. There's also Filmic, which was the older default, which is very similar, just has more saturated highlights, but AGX is generally considered to be more realistic and more pleasing. And if you export your renders in a low dynamic range format, such as PNG or JPEG, or even a 16-bit TIFF, then this tone mapping is going to be baked into your renders. However, if you export your renders in a high dynamic range format, such as OpenEXR, then the tone mapping won't be applied. The renders will be saved in a linear format, specifically Rec. 709. And if you open them in Photoshop or DaVinci Resolve, they're gonna look like this. And that's because it just doesn't make sense to apply tone mapping to a high dynamic range image. You want all of the original linear data to be preserved. And that's because the assumption is you're going to be tone mapping those renders yourself further down the line in whatever post-processing software you're using. So if you've ever exported a render from Blender in a high dynamic range format and wondered why the output doesn't match the viewport, this is the reason why. And if you open your renders in Photoshop or in DaVinci Resolve and you want their appearance to match the results that you had in Blender, you are going to need to apply the same view transform. And that's something we'll look at in the next video. So keep an eye out for that.